Mr. Devens? I'm Cujo. Well, how'd you know me? Oh, Missy Marshall described you perfectly. Handsome, strong-looking young man, sexy eyes, worried. This way, please. Uh, where are you taking me? To Missy Marshall. At her office? Surely you jest. I do. You dine alone with her at home. Very private. Easy to get things done. <laughs> Captain Kelly, waiting to take you to Missy Marshall in Speedful. You said I was meeting Missy Marsh. I mean, Miss Marshall at home. Is home, see? Name of boat, True Love. She lives out there? People who live on yachts don't have noisy neighbors. You'd be all by yourself. Well, Captain Kelly, this is Mr. Stevens. You deliver him to Missy Marshall, please. My pleasure, sir. The speedboat's waiting. Is that your cat? No, just found it wandering around the end of the pier. Unusual, too. Most cats don't take much to the water. I'm moored at the end of the pier. This way, sir. Are you taking that cat? <coughs> Might as well give it a good home aboard the True Love. Well, you could take me along in a case with holes in it like a pussycat. Uh, would you mind waiting for me for a minute? I'd like to make a phone call. <laughs> It's like our fearless leader caught herself a very nervous one this time. He has all symptoms of a married man. Well, he'll be three miles out. No one can get to him there. Mm, jealous wife make very strong swimmer. Confucius. Cujo, I just make it up. No, operator, I don't remember the area code number. Your dedication to housework is positively revolting, Samantha. Be patient, Mother. As soon as I burn the trash, we'll have time for a nice long visit. You realize, of course, that while you're igniting that, Margaret Marshall is doing the same thing to that husband of yours. <laughs> I told you why Darren went to Chicago. It's business. Monkey business. <laughs> She's not here, Donald. You get to your party. Uh, no. Maybe your party get to other party. <laughs> All set, sir? Uh, I guess so. Uh, this way, please. Did I hear the phone ring? I don't know, did you? Well, you were standing right there. Well, no, actually, I was standing over there. And now that you mention it, I did hear a ringing sound. Mother, did the phone ring while I was outside, or didn't it? I believe it did. Who was it? It didn't say. You answered, and you don't know who was on the other end? Well, not exactly. I, I didn't answer it. It must have been Darren. Oh, Mother, you really are impossible. Well, Samantha, I didn't want to be overly pushy. Sure, you wanted to talk to me, and now I have no way of reaching him. Why don't you go to Chicago? Because I promised I wouldn't. And because it's underhanded and sneaky and shows a complete lack of faith. All right, you've talked me into it. <laughs> into what? Well, I didn't promise him anything. After all, someone has to be there to make sure that he's not making a fool of you. Mother, I forbid you. You forbid me? Oh, isn't that divine? Oh, really, Samantha, I think you've lost your marble. <laughs>